Confessions 34. Finally, I must confess how I am tempted through the eye. Let the ears of your church, the ears of my devout brothers in Christ, listen to my words, so that I may bring to an end my discussion of the body's temptations to pleasure, which still provoke me as I sigh, longing for the shelter of that home which heaven will give me. The eyes delight in beautiful shapes of different sorts and bright and attractive colors. I would not have these things take possession of my soul. Let God possess it, he who made them all. He made them all very good, but it is he who is my good, not they. All day and every day while I am awake, they are there before my eyes. They allow me no respite, such as I am granted in moments of silence when there is no singing and sometimes no sound at all to be heard. For light, the queen of colors, pervades all that I see, wherever I am throughout the day, and by the ever-changing pattern of its rays, it entices me even when I am occupied with something else and take no special note of it. It wins so firm a hold on me that if I am suddenly deprived of it, I long to have it back. And if I am left for long without it, I grow dispirited. But the true light is the light which Tobias saw when though his eyes were blind, he taught his son the path he should follow in life and himself led the way, charity guiding his steps so that he did not stray. It is the light which Isaac saw when the sight of his eyes was dimmed and clouded by old age, and it was granted to him not to bless his sons in full knowledge as to which was which, but to know them by blessing them. It is the light which Jacob saw when, though his eyes were blinded by old age, a light shone in his heart and cast its beams over the tribes of Israel yet to come, as he foresaw them in the persons of his sons. It is the light which he saw when he laid his hands on his grandchildren, the sons of Joseph, not in the way that their father, who saw only the outward act, tried to make him do it, but mystically crossed in the way that he discerned by the light that shone within him. This is the true light. It is one alone, and all who see and love it are one. But in our life in the world, this earthly light of which I was speaking is a seasoning, sweet and tempting, but dangerous for those whose love for it is blind. Yet those who have learned to praise you for this as well as for your other gifts, O God, maker of all things, sing you a hymn of praise for it. They are not beguiled by it in their dreams. For myself I wish to be as they are. I resist the allurements of the eye for fear that as I walk upon your path my feet may be caught in a trap. Instead I raise the eyes of my spirit to you so that you may save my feet from the snare. Time and again you save them for I fail to escape the trap. You never cease to free me although again and again I find myself caught in the snares that are laid all about me. For you are the guardian of Israel, one who is never weary, never sleeps. By every kind of art and the skill of their hands, men make innumerable things, clothes, shoes, pottery, and other useful objects besides pictures and various works which are the fruit of their imagination. They make them on a far more lavish scale than is required to satisfy their own modest needs or to express their devotion. And all these things are additional temptations to the eye, made by men who love the worldly things they make themselves, but forget their own maker and destroy what he made in them. But, O oh my God, my glory, for these things too I offer you a hymn of thanksgiving. 
I make a sacrifice of praise to him who sanctifies me. For the beauty which flows through men's minds into their skillful hands comes from that beauty which is above their souls and for which my soul sighs all day and night. And it is from this same supreme beauty that men who make things of beauty and love it in its outward forms derive the principle by which they judge it. But they do not accept the same principle to guide them in the use they make of it. Yet it is there, and they do not see it. If only they could see it, they would not depart from it. They would preserve their strength for you, not squander it on luxuries that make them weary. Though I say this and see that it is true, my feet are still caught in the toils of this world's beauty. But you will free me, O Lord. I know that you will free me. Forever I keep your mercies in my mind. I am caught and need your mercy, and by your mercy you will save me from the snare. Sometimes if I have not fallen deep into the trap, I shall feel nothing when you rescue me. But at other times, when I am fast ensnared, I shall suffer the pain of it. <laughs>